YouTube and welcome to another video. Now I'm back up on the Dartmoor National Park. Now it's the second time I've had to do this intro because I wasn't planning on going to a totally different location. I was going to go to Nun's Cross um, to have a look at the old cross and the farmhouse. Unfortunately it is also used for kind of um, scout groups, um, kind of outdoor activity groups and stuff like that or kind of schools go there so you do get occasionally get people in the, the farmhouse it's not something that has generally been lived in since 1930 um, and it's quite a cool farmhouse because it was the address of the baddie stableton in the hound of the baskervilles and it's got a nice composition down there but the house is full of um, school children so obviously i'm not going to be standing outside like a crazy man photographing it um now I'm come to another cross instead. This is Windy Cross, it's slightly different. It's a lot smaller cross, but it does have a nice little waterfall at the bottom of it. I'm on the way now, the light is kicking off. I've had to rush from that location to this location. This is pretty much the closest thing I could get to to photograph. It was a 15 minute drive. I did actually have a bit of time spare today in this vlog. I thought, oh, I do, I've got enough time to do even do some golden hour shots but as it turns out I couldn't do that location I'm walking down this path gonna get to the new location um, which is Windy Cross I'll be down there in probably about five to, to ten minutes time get set up see what images we can capture Forgive me about the noise from the waterfall. Uh, when I say waterfall, it is the smallest one you'll probably ever find. Uh, it is an actual fall, uh, not just a cascade, so uh, it is a waterfall, I suppose. Um, now I'm down at a location. I've been down here for about five minutes going through some quick shots already. Um, in fact, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just doing some panoramic images. So I've been down here in the past and it's quite a cool place, but it is um, very difficult to photograph because you're kind of limited to a very fixed composition. If you want to use this waterfall and you want to use the cross which is here. Um, now this is Windy Cross. You can tell why it's called Windy Cross because it looks like it's been windswept over. Um, but like I said, you, to use this small cascade where I am and the cross, you kind of can only really shoot one composition that looks quite nice and that is looking this way into the water um, and having the cross to the very right of the frame. Now in the past I kind of bit thought the images were okay. It's somewhere that I think you need a lot of interest in the sky for it to work simply because you end up with a lot of negative space above the cross and above the fall. So I'm doing something slightly different. I'm trying to do um, portrait panoramic sweeps just getting starting at the left of the waterfall here and just finishing just past the cross I'm doing as many stitches as I can get there because it's going to be a lot of movement well not not a lot of movement in degrees but it's going to be a lot of changes between each picture you've got a lot of stuff going on the waterfall a lot of uh, changes with these angles of these rocks and the wall and the bank and obviously the water and then the cross so the more stitches I can get in there or the more images I take in between the better it's going to be um, we did get some really really nice light and if I knew it was going to be this good I probably to be honest wouldn't have come to this location but like I said I had to get down here I didn't have time to go anywhere else after uh, it all going wrong at Nun's Cross um, it's quite cool there's an army exercise going on and possibly um, marine stuff going on up here today there's a massive bus full of them and as I was taking some pictures earlier there were quite a few um, all geared up that came across here and went off in this direction it's only about 10 troops and up in the bus there must have been about 100 of them so I think it is some kind of kind of search and find type of thing they're going on they're all gone off their separate ways but I did just snap a few shots of them going across here 
I think they might come out quite cool. I'm going to try and adjust them so they look quite silhouetted in the pictures. Um, it's a shame the sun wasn't the, behind them this way because we'd have got some really nice silhouetted images for them just walking across the water in the lead here. Now shooting wise, I've got the polarizer on just simply to take some of the reflection off the top of this waterfall because it is quite glary. And I've also got um, a soft grad on to bring down the sky. We've still got a load of really nice color kicking off over here, which I'll re-expose you so you can see. Um, where the sun's setting. But behind me, we've got a really nice hue, but nothing really that strong. Or by the time I got down and set up, most of it was fading away. It's kind of died off quite quickly today. It was kind of fading around about bang on sunset. So it's not lasted that long. Still, cool place. I think the images have come out, come out quite nicely. I'm gonna try and see if I can do something with this reflection in the top of this leap now, possibly looking down towards the light while we've got it. Maybe trying to get the uh, cross in there as well. So I'm gonna get on with those shots. These ones here, like I said, simple panoramic um, stitches. I'm shooting wide open on that 16 to 35 mil lens. It's quite dark now. I was doing about a six second image. And that was about an ISO 200 with just a polarizer and a soft grad on there. So still don't know what they're gonna come out like. I'm not gonna know what they look like until I get them on the computer at all. Um, they're one of those things, they're either gonna stitch well or they're not gonna stitch well at all and it's gonna be something I can't use. So I have taken a normal few shots as well. If the stitches don't work, I'll have those. So you'll see both. But like I said, I'm gonna crack on now, try and get something set up using this reflection down here while there's a bit of the light and I'll catch up with you in a few minutes. at the location now um, sometimes it doesn't always go to plan and today has been an exact example of that uh, I think if I was at Nuns Cross uh, without complaining because that's not what I want to do uh, I think I probably would have had more time to set up and the look of the clouds in the sky I probably would have got some nice really long exposures with the house static obviously in this the kind of color in the clouds sweeping by but uh, that couldn't have happened so uh, I've come down here now I think the images probably going to be okay but this is generally a place I do struggle with um, I've never been amazingly happy with the images I've got down here so today will be quite nice because I'll be able to see whether I've cracked it this time now I've come away from the water because I'm getting bitten uh, quite badly by something down here I assume it's midges we did actually have horrendous midges on Dartmoor last year. It was almost getting to the point of uh, some of the ones from Scotland. So they're very bitey. Um, there is still a bit of color left in the clouds, but there's not much I can do with the composition or the uh, cross and the waterfall, simply because um, there is nothing really color wise or even very little definition left this side, which is the way I'll be shooting. I did have a little wander around the cross to see if I could get another composition set up. I just can't, in my mind, find something that works down there better than that that one I've got set up. Um, I think if you had the nice clouds, you could maybe potentially work with them, make a different composition work. Um, for instance, you could just shoot the cross, to be honest, uh, which would be nice, but it feels a bit of a shame to miss out the waterfall next to it because it is uniquely known on Dartmoor for having this kind of leet and this small fall next to it. 
Now, the crosses on Dartmoor, I've said about this in the past, although um, I'm not sure if I still have the vlog up that I said about it, but uh, these crosses were built, um, some of them are almost a thousand years old, and they're built to mark the waypoints between some of the old abbeys and things like that. Now, there used to be, or there is still an abbey in Buckfast Lee, although it is quite a new one, so I don't think that's the one. Um, and there was an abbey in Tavistock and the ones here I believe mark the waypoints for the monks and the kind of religious people as such to do pilgrimage and kind of walk between uh, the two points. I don't know how old Windy Cross is but the one I was going to look at earlier there is a book uh, which was Nuns Cross there is a book which that one is documented in around about 1240 and that is the oldest documented one on Dartmoor I believe. So they are very old and they are cool to see and it just shows that a lot of them have withstood the test of time and the elements and are still kind of standing, although Windy Cross here is a bit lopsided. You can understand that for something that's probably getting on 700 years old or something like that. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much location done now. Now I am going to be going somewhere for tomorrow morning for sunrise and I'm still not 100% sure where it is, but I have had a look and I do believe that if we get a nice sunrise tomorrow, it might match up roughly with Black Church Rock, which is on North Devon, which I'm probably about an hour away from. So I'm probably gonna make uh, the journey up there and maybe visit that location tomorrow morning, although I've never been there before and I'm not sure how easy it is to get there um, around twilight before the sun comes up. But I think it might be a cool place to go to because you know, I've never actually visited it. I do need to check the tie time, so you'll see on next week's vlog whether I did actually go there, whether the tide was right or not. Um, I'm doing a shot at the moment, which is an eight minute exposure just to try and capture any movement in these clouds at all. Uh, although I don't think there is any to be honest but um, it is what it is hope you've enjoyed watching it anyway and uh, follow me along with this one it's not going 100 cent to plan but you know it's all done now if you've got any comments please put them in the box and please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I'll catch up with you on the next vlog in the future which potentially could be Black Church Rock mm -hmm.